Good morning. I want to encourage you again to open your Bible. We need to see this passage carefully. Uh, go with me to Luke chapter 12, same passage we looked at yesterday, and here's why. I claimed something a little bit crazy. I said that when Jesus says that if we seek his kingdom, that all these things, meaning food and drink and clothing, all of these things will be added to us. And I said that promise of Jesus does not mean that we will never be sick. It's really critical that we understand this passage, partly because a couple of pastors locally, one at South Baptist in Flint, one at First Baptist of Goodrich, have both just tested positive for the coronavirus, which means one of two things. Either we are going to suggest that God is not faithful to keep his promises, which is a horrible charge to make against God, or we're going to suggest that they weren't faithful ministers, which is a horrible thing to say against someone who loves Jesus and is just trying to serve Jesus. So what does this promise actually mean? Well, I want to point you to things that are in the text. It's so important that we, we try to understand what Jesus is really saying. And to do that, let's read carefully. I want to give you two reasons why from this passage, I believe Jesus is not promising that we'll always be healthy. And then I want to give you two examples from the New Testament that demonstrate what Jesus is actually talking about. So let's look at the passage. Luke chapter 12, let's look at verse 22 and 23. Jesus says to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Now notice what he says. Don't be anxious. He doesn't say because the Father is definitely going to give you all the food and clothing you need. He says something else. He says there is more to life than food and clothing. In other words, God has something more precious for you. So that's my first reason. Jesus is actually saying there's something more important than food and clothing, and that's what he's promising to give you. And you can see that clearly in my second reason. Skip down to verse 32. Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now he's talking about the, the kingdom of God, that time when peace and righteousness reign, when there is no sickness, there is no death. But the kingdom of God, although it has partially begun because Jesus is raised from the dead and he's reigning in heaven, it's not present on earth. People still get sick, people still die, people still suffer. And so we need to understand how does this promise apply to us right now? Because Jesus says, right now, fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What does that mean? Well, I believe it means this. When we enter the kingdom through repentance and faith, our sins are forgiven and our Heavenly Father provides us what we need. But that doesn't always mean He gives us clothing and food. It may mean He gives us something that drives us to deeper faith in Him. Sometimes our suffering helps us recognize that we haven't trusted Him as fully as we should. Sometimes our suffering helps us realize that we need to repent of our sin. And sometimes God uses our suffering to show other people around us that Jesus Christ is precious and beautiful even while we are sick and even while we are dying. And I want to give you two examples of that from the New Testament. The first is a man named Epaphroditus. You can read about him in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Paul says that as he faithfully served Jesus, he was ill and almost died. And he never says that Epaphroditus somehow was not faithful or, or that he just needed more faith. He says that we as Christians should honor men like him who nearly died in the cause of the gospel. In other words, Epaphroditus risked his life serving Jesus and that is commendable. That is praiseworthy. Serving Jesus involves risk. And when people risk their lives to spread the good news of Jesus, that is commendable. There's no promise that you're guaranteed health. Epaphroditus wasn't healthy. He almost died. Not only that, you have the example of the Apostle Paul himself. And really, you can see this in all of Paul's writings, but it's nowhere more obvious than in 2 Corinthians. Paul says, 
that he was given a thorn in the flesh. And, and some people think that that was a physical ailment. The reality is we don't know exactly what it was. All we know is he says that it was a messenger of Satan given to him to torment him. And three times he asked Jesus to take it away. And three times Jesus said, no. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, when you and I are weak, when we are sick, when we are dying, and we show that we trust Jesus even as we die, we show that Jesus is precious and that we have a hope that's beyond the grave. So let me ask you this. Imagine for just a moment that you contract the coronavirus. You're becoming very ill. You're having a hard time breathing. You're in the hospital and you may die. Now, if you're a believer in Jesus and you know that your sins are forgiven and you know that you have a hope and a future after death, what if God uses your confidence and joy as you die to lead someone else to Christ? Maybe it's a hospital worker. Maybe it's a family member. But if your death is used by God so that someone else experiences the forgiveness of sins that leads to eternal life, wouldn't it be worth it? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask that you would bless us with these promises of Jesus that would free us from fear and anxiety. And I pray that you would make us faithful. I pray that the way we live now would point to the hope that we have in Christ. So increase our faith, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.